Hello everyone, I'm Tim Fields, CEO of BSN.TV, here with the Fonzarelli, aka the Fonz, and we are here with Blurred Soup Episode 3. I love I love, I love love the, the word Blurred Soup because it's short for BS, if you actually catch it, so sit back and enjoy, and we'll let the Fonz go ahead and take the lead on what we're talking about today, this week. So as you know, I am your designated content creator that you can only see on Black Esports Network, Ari Fonzarelli. And so today, I have a myriad of things that we're going to talk about. So, first things first, though, is we are going to talk about the most recent thing to hit the hot presses, which is Sony's July 8th state of play. It was, for some terrible reason, only 30 minutes long. And even though we saw a bunch of games and only six minutes of death loop gameplay, there was a lot to touch on. We've got they've got a PlayStation VR game coming, which is the sequel to Moss. It'll be Moss Book Two. It's currently in development. They've got a cool solo or four play co op game called Arcade Again, which early accessed July eighth, and. The full game comes out only on PlayStation 5 mm-hmm. in 2022. Tribes of Midgard was very popular at E3, and it remains popular to the point up unto its July 27th release. And I'm actually kind of, I don't have a PlayStation, but I am really excited for a lot of these games. Tribes of Midgard will be a 10-player survival action RPG. It has two modes and eight classes, and it will have a variety of seasons that will intertwine with Norse mythology stories. So if you like Norse mythos and you're looking for a new game to play and something that will update regularly, right. I think Tribes of Midgard is going to be that game. It's going to be that game. We've got Forged in Shadow Tower, which we actually didn't get a whole lot of information on. I was just able to write down that its abbreviation was FIST. Mm-hmm. And that it comes out September 7th. Uh, we have Sifu, a fighting game, which comes out in early next year. We of have course. Hunter's Arena, which is a strategy survival game that has two battle royale modes and will launch on in August on PlayStation 4 and 5. But if you have PlayStation Plus, you can actually download the game starting on August 3rd. But if you don't have PlayStation Plus, I'm not entirely sure when that will come out for you. Uh, We have Jet the Far Shore, which is coming later this year. And apparently, according to uh, to the speaker, there were three devs only working on this at one point. But it's a motion dedicated game and it is Reminiscent, it's a space game. So we're back to the interstellar, interspace theme once more. Right. Two Sega games were put out at the Sony uh, State of Play, and those were the Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles game, which comes out October 15th. Yep, super excited. And then, yes, this, and then my all time favorite just in general, that I've been really hype about. The true crime game Lost Judgment is coming out September 24th. So it is definitely like a stop motion CGI. It kind of has like until dawn, like kind of like animation like themes in the way that it kind of looks like a movie. Right. Because it's basically Last Judgment is a spinoff of Yakuza. Yes. Yeah. And I that's not the first time I've heard that either. And I always I always thought like they I heard I've heard the phrase like sequel spin off a couple yep. of times. So I I do feel like I should probably play a Yakuza game before I step in, but who knows. Right, that's actually never, something I was actually thinking about doing this summer is actually trying to as I've never played, there's six games total and I've never played a single one of them. But they're both open world, they're both Grand Theft Auto style too, so I'm like, well as long as they get enough time for the story to kind of do it because mm-hmm. I mean they're, they're great games. I mean they, they would be doing it if they didn't I mean, they wouldn't have six games out of it if it sucked. So apparently, I mean, plus, you know, it's, it's Sega, so I got to show love whenever I can. Not fanboying, I'm just saying. But yeah. Tam, you have to stop telling people that you're not a fanboy of things <laughs> because at some point, people are going to stop believing that you're not a fanboy. True, they're going to be like, he's a fanboy. <laughs> <laughs> this is very much true. I Well, I've always said I'm a Sega fanboy. I always said that. I've always, I That's always. True. A claim to that throne of Sega. I mean, Sega was the '90s, man. It was fantastic. They came out. 
I mean, people understand. Like, when I saw Sonic, I'm like, here we go, Sonic. Way better character than what fucking Mario ass was. Super fucking fat. Like, he just... It was just big dick energy right from the jump with Sonic, and I fell in love with it. It was fantastic. Sonic and, has big dick energy. To right. <laughs> Sonic was like, yo, fuck Mario and slow ass. We doing this shit my way. And like, it was, it was fantastic. It was it was raw. It was real. And then, plus, Street Rage, and then gameplay, and then... Then the finisher for me, though, was definitely with the Dreamcast and Jet Set Radio. Oh, yeah. Jet Set Radio was just fantastic, and I just fell in love with that, too, so... Continue People still talk about Jet Set Radio to this day, though. It's such a yeah. It's, it's, such a it's like Sega has that same issue with Nintendo, where they're just like, "Oh, you want that game? Yeah, yeah, we want it. All right, we'll never give it to you." Well, Sega is really still showing PlayStation a lot of love, um, but they only really they did only have two games in that show bit, which yeah. were the Demon Slayer game and the Lost Judgment game, and I was kind of hoping for a little bit more. Yeah. Um, especially just like because plus I know it's a lot, it's a lot to Sonic. back in in three minutes spot. too. It's a lot to pack yeah. in in 30 minutes. Like, these Which, things shouldn't be timed. They should be like, yo, go with the flow. Like, just finish it. I just don't really like the fact that, like, if you're going to time it, why is it 30 minutes? I feel like this is something that could have had 45 and been okay. Yeah. Like, I definitely think they could have stretched everything out to an hour because my idea was when I saw that it was going to be 30 minutes, here's what I thought. It was going to be 30 minutes of death loop. Yeah. And then 30 minutes of other games. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. I did not realize it was going to be 30 minutes altogether. And on the topic of Deathloop, I found out that the protagonist's name is Colt. Mm -hmm. C-O-L-T. He's stuck in a circular time loop that you have to break by killing eight enemies. And you win. Or you just die and then start your day all over again in a time loop. And that also comes out. And that comes out September 14th. So we've still got some time and ways. And then Death Stranding Director's Cut is officially coming September 24th. We've got new story missions, a firing range, advanced combat mechanics, and to new battles. DLC. <laughs> yeah. DLC. A director's, a, aren't most director's cuts DLC, whether they be television director's cuts or movie director's exactly. cuts? Exactly. Well, I mean, outside what um, Zack Snyder did with Justice League, that's about it. That was actually a direct, that was actually okay. It went from a two-hour piece of shit to a movie to a four-hour amazingness comic book style shit. So, yeah, yeah. I um I find that uh, I don't think there were any clear winners or losers of this state of play. I feel like everybody used their time wisely. I feel like nobody wasted my time. I. I didn't walk away, or I didn't, like, leave any of those games, like, wanting more out of their descriptions. Um, and all of these games are coming within the next three to, I want to say, six months. Right. Because See, my, some of these... And my issue with that was because Sony was not at all at E3. And so, yes. like, for 30 minutes of just, like, this, of just game trailers, I'm like, that's not what we should have got. We should have got a lot more. Especially for your, and, not, for your ass not being an E3. This should have been an hour long yeah. full of some more goodness. Like, it was just like, okay, what do you guys got? What are you guys doing? We'll take it. And that's what they did. Yeah. It's not right. It's not fair. And I find that the <sighs> words are hard. I find that the only way that they could have gotten away with this mm-hmm. is if they had an E3 showcase. But they didn't. Because so they didn't. I really, because of, they didn't have any showcase. This yes, and it. I feel like, yes, and I feel like it's going, their stuff is going to suffer incredibly yeah. for it. Like, I feel like their viewership is going to, like, with, like, the Sony State of Plays, it's just going to decrease. Like, they may think that people are going to come back, but I don't think people will. Like I think, I think a lot of people are going to think that Sony will be is getting too big for its video game britches now, so to speak. Yeah, especially compared to what game? Pa- no, don't do it. Yes, especially compared yeah, to. Game- getting- <laughs> it's yes. true because think about like Game Pass is getting all the super all the games are coming out on Game Pass. Like you don't have to pay for any of this shit. As long as you think pay your monthly Game getting- Pass, like for example yes. the um, the new zombie game that's coming out. That's going to be on Game Pass. 
So it's like, okay, I'm not have to worry about any of these games at all. And then actually you can pre-download, like I got to see you actually have to pre-download it right now too. So it's like the day of when that thing comes out, Game Pass is allowing pre-downloads for all the games that are coming out now. So that way, literally, when the day of comes out, boom, you're ready to go. So here's the thing, though. Talk to me. You t- We're back to the Game Pass thing, though, at this point. Mm-hmm. Because you, you brought it up, so I'm going to so I'm going it. to bring it home a little bit when I say that PlayStation Plus, out of all of these games, only one is on PlayStation Plus. Yep, that's Lost. Which, yep. Yep, that's Hunter's Arena. Mm-hmm. And, so, and then Lost Judgment will be on the PSN. PS PlayStation Now. Why can't they just combine them? I am back to this again. I am once again asking. And that's what Microsoft did. Plus. Microsoft was like, yo, with Game Pass Ultimate, you get Xbox Live Go and Game Pass. See? One price. See? And I said that before that's the what... last podcast. Like, why doesn't Sony have a PlayStation Now Plus? Where you get PlayStation Plus for your, for your interactivity, and then you get free yeah. access to that. But I'm still paying 10 and 10. It's a shame. I guess, I, it's just, like I said, Sony is suffering from the Nintendo clause where they don't listen to their fucking people or their fan base. They're just like, all right, they're like, great idea, great idea. We're doing what we're doing before. Like, it's, it's fucking horrible. <laughs> It's a real shame. Like, oh, like, speaking of Nintendo, they also yeah. announced this week. I mean, will you lead the way if I'm jumping ahead? Please, please let me know. If I, no, if keep going. No, keep going. Because I, it's a perfect segue, which is that the OLED, everybody says OLED. I've been saying O-L-E-D. <laughs> yeah, I say OLED. OLED. The OLED, the OLED Nintendo Switch has been revealed to us, which is just your regular, regular, schmegular Nintendo Switch and not the Nintendo Switch Pro we were all hoping for. Like it, but it, don't say it. Mm-hmm. Say, say, say it. Do say it. No, go for it. You can say it. October 8th. Yep. $350 for a 7 inch OLED screen. Same day as Met- Metroid Dread, which is I'm, which which, and this is the thing they could have came out with a collector's edition with this shit, you know something, because if you, there's no bundle, there's nothing for it, and this and this is the thing. So let me let me step back. So, sure. to me personally, this is just nothing but a Switch Lite upgrade. That's how I look at it because most Switch users aren't really playing on their Switch like that. Most of them they have the dock. And they did drop the dock with the Ethernet port to have better online play now, which is cool. But I'm like, they can sell the dock separately still. So it was like for a 7-inch screen, and then you're going from a 32 gigabyte to a 64 gigabyte hard drive, and then the Ethernet port on the dock for fucking 50 bucks extra, stop. Mm-hmm. No 4K support, stop. none of that stuff done. Like, oh, it hit, and like I said, it added dynamic um, HDR for audio, but it was like, that doesn't mean shit because like I'm, I don't play my Switch through a headset. I play my Switch on my fucking TV. And so I would love yeah. that 4K support. It's like Nintendo, and this thing you understand, the Switch came out back in 2017. This motherfucker Correct. is four years old. For four-year-old technology, for us, for you to give us three things that are, that are still dated is the most pointless shit in the world. They, it, The Verge did confirm with a Nintendo spokesperson that the Nintendo Switch OLED model does not have any new CPU or more RAM from previous Nintendo Nothing. Switch models. And that the Ninten- and that this new Nintendo Switch is mostly a screen upgrade. Yep. How, mostly it does, all. <laughs> all the screen upgrade. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Does, you went from a 6.3 to a 7. You gave us 0.7 more. And it was like, yo, and it's white. Whoa. Whoa. Yes, it does come in this white black set along with your classic red and blue Nintendo Switch Neon. But it says a mostly screen update, but the other updates include a new dock with a built in Ethernet right. for it because that Which, was a probably that was apparently a problem last time. Oh god, no you, you, Nintendo's always sucks for internet connection. Like, it's always been trash, especially with the Wi-Fi connection. So, the, I do like the Ethernet port because, especially for Smash players, it's like, yo, now we're good. Mm-hmm. Now now we're linked up, we're hard drived up, we're good. We, we got direct connection. Mm-hmm. But you can just release a dock separately. Yes. 
No 4K support, uh, though. How the fuck do you have no 4K support? I was just about to say that. There's like, no you, 4K you support. Let me break it down real quick. Real quick here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yes, yes, so yes. you gave us I'm a telling. doper screen, right? OLED technology is fantastic, right? Organic you, light emitting diode. But guess what? That shit is fucking useless if it's not 4K. Oh. So, so imagine somebody gives you a great TV. So let's put it this way. Let's take it back a step. So imagine you're you're like somebody got you a, a brand new TV for Christmas or something, right? A brand yeah. new TV, like something fantastic, right? And then it's yeah, like yeah, brand new TVs really kill me too because like the pictures are so clear, like they look real. Right. So imagine that, right? You got a brand new TV. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they give you a Tardis twenty six hundred to connect through coaxial. So now you're, you have this great 4K TV that can only receive an analog system from your console. That's exactly how I look at this. They gave us nothing. They gave us backwards technology. Because, like, you can't even love the OLED technology because it's not 4K. Yeah, 1080p support when in TV mode and 720p uh, console support does not really make up for a lack of 4K. And I noticed that a lot. This week in the gaming groups, that 4K was a very where is it at though um, kind of uh, unit that was lacking. It's longer and heavier, which I feel like obviously leads to more problems. Um, like yeah, in yeah, terms of handling is, it for younger people. But that's battery saying, life is still nine upgrade. hours. That's exactly what I was yeah. saying. It's a switch light upgrade. This should be called yeah. the OLED switch light. Well, a switch a switch light can't 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 dock into a TV at all. And this thing shouldn't dock either. Because what's the point of having this big ass screen if you dock in it? That I'm like, this, like this, you, you see the logic? I'm, I'm, this is all logical shit. Yes. That yes. doesn't make any sense. Like this thing should have been what we all kind of suggested wanted: upgraded yes. hard drive, upgraded RAM, just like the PS5, mm-hmm. PS. I mean, in Xbox Series X, like something. That's not worth extra fifty bucks. Like, and guess what the yeah. price is? Three forty nine ninety nine. But sadly, yeah. as Nintendo like as Nintendo fanboys, it's gonna sell out. Everybody's gonna grab it anyway. So, even though I can bitch and moan all please right now, people are still gonna buy it. I mean, it's coming out October eighth, and I just I have to imagine that like, I just have to imagine that producing this as massive as they like will at this point, as of July sixth, the Nintendo Switch has shipped. Not ordered, not like purchased, but shipped out. Eighty-four point five nine million mm-hmm. units. So that's eighty-four like million yep. fifty-nine thousand. Like you know, <laughs> so I just feel so. I just feel like that. Like people, not only are people going to like want to like upgrade like their screen, but like newer people like myself are gonna want this. Like, people who have been wanting a Nintendo Switch, but haven't had the resources or the money or, like, the luck of time to, mm. like, get one shipped to them. You know, a lot of the people who are probably going to be pre-ordering this and then getting one are going to be the people who have been waiting six months for a Nintendo Switch to come to their house. True. They're just going to cancel their Nintendo Switch order and then order one of these new ones and there and then the logic is well if i buy this 350 dollar one for a hundred dollars more mm. it's going to be a lot easier and i worry that they that that might not be the case because all consoles are experiencing a shortage of like mass yeah, producing the sense, demand yeah. is for not meeting of the supply point blank right. and they already told us so and that it was going to be this way well into 2022 so I just feel like Nintendo is going to create more problems for themselves releasing it so soon. Like this is like three, like they released, they announced it on Monday, July 4th. Yeah. And it's only been four days. And, four and I, love days, how they, I love how they announced it on the day that most Americans had off. <laughs> yes. A day most Americans had off and could be sitting at their computers and pre-ordering it in yeah. the moment. Like that's sneaky. That's sneaky capitalism. <laughs> that is some sneaky consumerism, and I applaud them for it. For a console, um, that don't mean shit, though, man. That's the thing. Like this, this thing should have came out a year later after the Switch came out. That's how I feel about it. It should have came out a year later, and then we and I feel like Nintendo still owes us a Switch Pro. 
Yeah. Because at this point, if it's not a Switch Pro, because that's it. I mean, that 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 literally still the deal. They don't give a fuck about a Switch Pro. It's not happening. Like I said, they didn't update the chipset. They, they only updated a hard drive from 3264 and nothing else. That is not worth 49 50 bucks extra. No. At that point, you're just paying for, like, the new screen. Yeah. Like, literally, like that extra, that you're, extra you're going from bucks. this to this. That's it. That's all you're doing. A little bit. A little, 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 little. That's, that's all you're doing. Like, come on now, y'all. <laughs> Freaking sad. Tim is a universal console player. He loves having all of them at the same time. Yes, it's kind of bad. I don't know. It's, kind of bad. it's not bad. I just love to let. I just love to let the listeners know. Yes, let the listeners listen. I am a gamer at the end of the day. I run a company, but I am a gamer at the end of the day. Because I've been there. Literally. Unfortunately, I'm not a gamer as much as I like to. But, you know, that's the cost to be the boss, in other words. I mean, I try to stream when I can, y'all. But, you know. Because I was about to stream the new Rex and Click. Like like I said, I have a back. If you if you look behind me, I have a back <laughs> of freaking games. Like a ridiculous. Matter of fact, let's help me switch that up. Ridiculous backlog of games right there that I haven't touched. <laughs> so we do have a sh- we do have our stream every Friday mornings, which is our free for all Friday, where you can check us out on twitch.tv slash besn tv one for a myriad of games that we're playing or trying out. So if you're up in the morning, so looking for something to listen to, maybe something to watch while you're brushing your teeth or on your way to work. Well, if you commute and don't text and drive. <laughs> then you should definitely check don't. us out Friday mornings for our Friday morning free for all stream. Definitely do not text and drive. Don't ever, ever text and drive. That shit is dangerous. That's that's worse than drinking and driving. That's how look at because you're you're you're. I'm not saying either one is good. <laughs> Let's do a disclaimer right there. Either one of them shitty. But I'm saying when you text and drive, you literally are breaking away from not even looking at the road. Yeah. Like, it's not like you being don't. incoherent. You're just like literally. Oh, look at this! You're looking away from the fucking road. Yeah. That's if you're it. gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna tune in on Friday mornings and you're on your way to work, make sure you're listening, not watching. Listening, listening to this great podcast of BS. Yeah. Short sure for blurred soup, not the other word. If you think about it. <laughs> blurred soup, BS. Yep. Indeed. I. Uh, <laughs> on the topic of live streams, Maxis and EA put on a. College Living live stream a couple hours before the Sony State of Play because two weeks from July 8th, we will be playing with our brand new expansion pack titled The Sims 4 Cottage Living. And it so, is- so, yeah, so go into detail. What's this about? Is you sitting back just being a cottage? This is just your vacation, yeah. vacation sim? So, and have uh, you seen vacation before? Yes, your Sims can definitely vacation in The Sims 4. My Sims have gone on vacation. And there's even a vacation rental home in the world, which is called Henford on Bagley, otherwise known as The Hob. And that is where your cottage living... uh, That's where your cottage living will take place. There are two gameplay... um, functions that are new to probably more gamers with the exception of myself because Mm. i bought these items in the sims 3 store way back when and that is the chicken coop and the animal pen now in a chicken coop you can have and own up to eight chickens you can name them like pets and then you can socialize with them and you can lay eggs and they can hatch and give you more chickens Can can you cook the eggs (laughs) <laughs> yes, you can. You can use the eggs and recipes. Nice. And you can also have chickens that lay golden eggs. You can have roosters that are evil. You can have What's the roosters. evil rooster doing? What is it what's the evil rooster plotting? <laughs> the evil <laughs> rooster will help actually <laughs> I'm under the impression that the evil rooster will help fight off the foxes who try to get into your chicken coop because this world will come with a lot challenge, which is new to the entire game of the Sims. Lot challenges. And it's where you will have your Sims actively doing things that will make your gameplay difficult. So if you have the wild foxes lot challenge on a lot in mm. Henford on Bagley, which is your, once again, your cottage living world that comes with your expansion. 
foxes will come onto your lot and try to steal your produce and try to eat your chickens. Can you kill the foxes? You cannot kill them, but you can befriend them and ask them not to steal your stuff. Really? They talk? Yes. Real talk. No, I mean, like, the foxes talk. You talk to them. Hey, Mr. Fox, how you doing? Listen, man, I know you. I know you're stealing my shit. It's more like a. <laughs> it's very to me when I first heard about it. It sounded very swipe or no swiping. You know right. what I mean? Very swipe or no swiping. So, um, you will. This made the fox. <laughs> yes. So you are able to. Um, so you're able to befriend them and ask them not to steer things. Or you can just let them run rampant and ruin your life. Or, and you'll just be able to see them hanging out in the neighborhood. The it's animal bloody. pen, you'll have you'll have the option to pick between a cow and a llama. And it's one animal per pen. So if you have two pens, you can have a cow and a llama. So Are you like reproducing you, or are they pets? They're, they're pets. Um, you can use the cows to get milk, and that helps with your recipes. What are you, you getting from a llama? Just the, fur, just the fur? The pelts? You get wool from the llama, yeah, correct. The pelts, yeah. And llamas will also scare foxes away. Oh, shit. It's a, oh, shit, it's a llama. Yeah. <laughs> Back up, bro. You, we don't want that smoke from that llama. Oh, the llamas just spit? Is that what they do? Yes, llamas can spit. Llamas, alpacas, camels, anything that's kind of got, like, that hump. The hump. Yeah. <laughs> How do you uh, fight? I spit. Is it acid? No. It's just saliva. But it's from the back of the throat. <laughs> so it's hate. gross. Right. Fox hate. Foxes hate it. I just want to see. I, did it, so did they show, like, video footage and all this? Because like, I think it'd be hilarious to see a fox is on top of a fence just plotting, like, <laughs> They did actually show, um... There's also bunny rabbits that you can befriend and birds in this world. And they actually okay, uh, had a fox. Are you like a, and a hippie bunny in this thing or something? Bite. You're befriending everything? Like, are you vegan? It's more It's more homesteading. It's more homesteading. <laughs> this this game farming. sounds very vegan. It's a vegan sim yes. game. <laughs> so there's, there's already a vegetarian trait. So here's the fun thing. Talk to me. And so cottage living will come with two extra traits. And that is one is animal enthusiast, which will help you interact with the wild animals in the world. So your foxes, your bunnies, and your birds. And then there's the lactose intolerant trait, which means that your sim will have a hard time eating things that contain milk and cheese. So your sim dies? <laughs> no, your sim doesn't die. You just, the lactose intolerant trait will have more of an emphasis on the use of ingredients for mm. your cooking skill. So you just start making and, nut milks and nut cheeses and oat milks. Yes. Oat nuts. And then it, it even does you one better and you can even, um, there's a canning that comes with the cooking skill under oh, cottage sure. living. Yeah, so you can grow eggplants and pumpkins and watermelons, and you can can those mm -hmm. and make them into pastes and sauces and jams. So can it's, you sell them? Yes, you can. You okay. can sell them in grocery stalls. Um, I don't think you can sell them on Plopsy, which is like the Etsy of the Sims 4 game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but say, how does the Sims make money? Like, that's the thing. How does the Sim character make money? Like, you do, do odd jobs and stuff like Because I've never played the Sim. I played Sim City. I mostly just destroyed shit, but I actually never played The Sims itself. Well, your Sims characters, when you make a Sim, you can actually get them a job. Um, okay. You can, you could, you, in the way back when they had to look in the newspaper for a job, and now they can just go online or go on their phone and look for a job. And your base game comes with all different kinds of careers. It mm -hmm. comes with like a writing career, a painting career, like a music career. And then the more expansions I'm you get, though, the more. I'm a writer in The Sims. <laughs> I am a successful writer in The Sims, actually. All of my I've written Sims 18 become, books. Yes. All of my Sims, all of my Sims selves become best-selling novelists. That's awesome. I swear. That's... And I love it. Like, no matter what. Like, if I'm... George like, R. R. Usually, Martin comes to me in The Sims. Yes! Basically. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, There is a new skill on the topic of careers um there is a new skill it's called cross stitching um so you can actually like cross stitch like landscapes and photos see, with an actual like cross stitching hoop 
but it's only a minor skill. So this, so all of your sim skills, when your sim has skills like writing mm-hmm. and logic and charisma, they go up to ten. Okay. But with um, the Sims Four, they've been doing something called minor skills. So like dancing, the medium skill, and paranormal stuff, they only go up to level five. So cross stitching only goes up to level five, but it's a whole new like skill. Yeah. And the more so can you, you like crochet and shit too now and everything? So, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so that still can start making shit and selling it to then too. Yes. That's awesome. Yep. So you can sell your cross stitch patterns and you can unlock. There's like, I think there's like 35 of them that you can unlock. Mm. So that's my goal is I'm going to try to unlock all 35. It's like, what do you do for a living? I crochet in the sense. <laughs> Me. Um, you can... Sims can now go on picnics. Picnics. There's a cute little picnic basket, and your Sims can cook stuff, and they can, and you can move it to the picnic basket, and then put the picnic basket in your Sims inventory, and then your Sim goes to um, mm. like a park or something, yeah. and they can sit at a picnic bench and lay it all out. That's cool. That's super and cool. I've never, we've never had anything like that in The Sims before, I don't think. I don't think we've ever had, like, the option This is just to seeming too much real me. life now. It seems like you actually have to work. Like, I thought The Sims was to be fun. Now it's like you're working. I gotta go to work, man. Gotta, 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 it gotta is stuff. fun, though. Yeah. Like, it's fun. Like, like one of my Let's Plays is, um, the challenge, challenges always make it kind of exciting, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, so the bringing in of lot challenges... Um, is going to be really helpful for gameplay. Um, along with like careers, you have um, your Sims have aspirations, so like life goals that they can aspire to. So cottage living will actually come with the country caretaker aspiration, Ooh. which is an aspiration that focuses strictly on the world and growing crops and participating in the weekly fairs that um, that the town will have. Um, there's also a new NPC called the villager that comes with the hob. The okay. the the hen, the the what is it? Hen, hen, the Henyon Bagley, the Hob. My battery is low. I forgot my, oh, I forgot my charger in the other room. Why is your phone dying? No, my laptop is dying. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I know. Not in the middle of the podcast. I know. Is there a way we can edit this part out and then switch it? No, I haven't edited. I haven't done any of the editing yet. But if I can edit, I mean, I can edit. I mean, it is what it is. No, just go run and go get it real quick. You good? Okay. Okay. okay I mean, okay. we'll look at the Game of Thrones background. Okay. Go for it. You want to shamelessly plug while I get my. Got it. Oh, yeah, top. I'll do it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is your boy T Fields here. And like I said, welcome to BSN's Bar 2. We got a lot of good stuff going on this year, especially with our partnership with some major companies that we're getting reannounced as well, too. And we're going to be upgrading our platform as well, too. So stay tuned. We got a lot of stuff that we're working on, especially with tournaments. We got new tournaments coming on with new games that we're looking to get, get aboard. So definitely go to our site and sign up for them. And also, we have, uh, like I said, you can be part of the podcast. We got lots of cool things coming up. Be part of the community. This is for you guys. We're doing this for you. We're doing to get more people color into esports and gaming. So whether that's through being a pro gamer, through streaming, through game development, I mean, we just want you in here. That's all. And then we're going to do everything that we can to get you going, too. So super excited about that. And that's going to give us time for the Fonz to return. And she has returned. Powered up, charged up, ready to take on the world. I think one of my favorite things about, like, these starting podcasts is going to be, like, these happy accidents like this. Because it's real. It's real. <laughs> it is. It is. And it's always going to be like a hardcore like lesson learned, like, you know, on some things. But um, you know, I am coming to you live from Texas, so things are a little bit wonky. Live. So have you eaten wonky. some steak in Texas? I've eaten a lot of brisket. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the brisket tacos, I'll take the brisket sandwich, Just give me the brisket. I love brisket tacos now. I'm surprised you like, haven't, I don't know. No, Say again? No, but I'm surprised you haven't tried any beef tongue down there. I mean, you're in, you're in Cattle City. You're in Cattle State. Like, it's nothing but cattle. Yeah, there is a lot of beef, and I think that's kind of why I've been staying away from it. But, like, at the same time, like, I want... I. There are so many steakhouses down here. It's hard to pick one. 
yeah, it's especially hard. That one doesn't suck. That's the other thing too. Like you want to go to places yeah. like, and then you really can't trust Yelp reviews. Well, I don't trust Yelp reviews because, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, it's like people who watch Discovery Channel. Like, oh, let's go there. I'm like, no, that place sucks. Discovery Channel showcases it because it sucks. That's why they're getting some sales. That's just me. That's how I look at. Like I like going to places where it's the mom and pop shop. All the all the poor people go. That's the best food to me. I can and like I it's got love. the old Pepsi menu from the eighties. That food is going to be banging because if they if they got time to change the sign, they ain't got time to cook some good ass food. That's all I look at. I want to go in. Yeah. And it says the burger is a dollar ninety nine. I know it's going to be smacking. <laughs> if they ain't changed prices since the eighties, it's going to be some good ass food. Oh my gosh. I mean, same thing happened with McDonald's because McDonald's used to be banging. But McDonald's good. used to be, man, McDonald's really was banging like back in the day, wasn't it? Now, now was just like, ugh, you, you shouldn't even touch it. Things changed when they found out that the Monopoly game was being rigged. Oh, dude, as a matter of fact, you ever, oh, dude, that special was so good. They did a whole special. Like millions. HBO. Yes, that shit. I'm like, yo, this shit is real. <laughs> I'm like, that's what happened with Monopoly. Motherfuckers was scamming. Because I'm like, why can't I if, never get Boardwalk? Why can't I never get this million <laughs> If you are listening and have not seen HBO's documentary series, McMillan, McMillions, McMillions, about the, about the multi-million dollar Monopoly, McDonald's Monopoly scam that ran from the late 90s to the early 2000s, I highly recommend you give it a watch because... It's real. When you're my when you're my age and you and you and you watch something about something and and you watch something about a thing that happened to you or that happened in the world when you were like five, it's very nerve wracking. <laughs> you're like all of, all of it was a lie. <laughs> it it, all it was does. A lie. It it really does feel that way. You know, you grow up and you see like and you know and the commercials that they show. You know, our commercials that you see on the TV, you know, growing up. Yep. And then, like, you find out that, like, it's not true or that it's not what it really appeared to be. Like, that does something to you. Like, this is bullshit. Like, it just, it just, it just kind of, like, breaks, it just breaks apart, like, something, like, inside. It's like the first, it's like, it's like the time I read, it's like the time I was, like, 15, 16 and read The Double Life of Pocahontas. I cried for about an hour after. Or for me, it's back like, in fourth grade when I read the, where the red fern grows, and you find out the dog died. <laughs> what <a> dog. Uh, <laughs> yes, about like the Irish setters, right? Yeah. What was that yeah. one book about? Oh uh, shit! What's the name of that shit? Like where he has the axe. God. Hatchet. Hatchet. Yes. Hatchet. That shit is real. So, <laughs> and it's so funny because like Hatchet kind of reminds me of like, like. The things that like are being done in Hatchet are kind of like reminiscent of like what you'll be doing in like cottage living, kind of just like getting into like the bare bones of just like living off the land. And one of the lot challenges that comes with the expansion is um, city is um, yeah. not city living, but um, it's called simple living, which is um, a challenge in which you can only make recipes with the ingredients you have. So mm. it's very farm to table, but it's called simple. It's simply living. So if you don't have the ingredient for something, you can't make it. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot for people to do with this expansion pack. And I've never seen the Sims community so excited for a pack in a very long time. To the point where more people are pre-ordering it than dissing on it beforehand. Mm. I, myself included. I have pre-ordered this pack because I was ready for it. Right, you were feeling like, for it. You're like, I need this. Yeah, I just... I mean, I've been kind of wanting something... I mean, I feel like The Sims 4 has a lot of packs that, even though they are separate in their own way, they go together greatly. And I think this one will do really good with some of the kits that we have. Mm. Now that kits are like a microtransaction that the Sims 4, that EA and Maxis has for the Sims 4 now. Um, I think it's going to go really well with. Um, I mean, how many expansions Nifty. has the Sim put out since then? Like, it seems like how many expansions is it? Well, they broke them down into categories now. Okay. There's expansions, your game packs, your stuff packs, and then your kits. And, like, I want to say there's at least, there's got to be 
I think the last time I like had to repair my game entirely, I think there was like, I had like 40. I'm missing like three expansions, four expansions, four. Oh damn, that's a lot I'm of missing, expansions. I'm missing one game pack. But this is still uh, stuck in the same Sims 4 though, right? This is still based off Sims 4 technology? Yeah, this is all Sims 4, but so it's, it's so all DLC. Sims 5 is due then, a Sims 5 is due. Sims 5 is due, but they are having a way, but I really don't think we'll see Sims 5 for another four years. Really? Maybe even more. They're making that much money off of it still? Yeah, because we're still buying packs. That's true. You said this is the fourth expansion for Sims 4? Um, this is, there's about 40. I want to say. 40 expansions? Is, there's got to be at least 40. Because like, I really all, do. And it's all for the Sims 4, right? Yeah. Jeez, yeah, they're not worried about a fucking five at all. If you guys are buying forty oh. expansions, they're no. not thinking about five. No. <laughs> they're like a Sims five. <laughs> Drop the holiday season next month. Like that's what they're... I am not a perfectionist in that I'm the kind of person who needs to have all of the packs. Like yeah. I'm content with only with being like without some, like if I really don't need it. Like Journey to Batu, the Star Wars game pack. I obviously do not have. Yeah. I've never seen Star Wars a day in my life. Why would I hold on, buy hold on, such hold a hold thing? Hold on, hold on. You, you've never seen Star Wars? Oh my God, we're not doing this again. We are doing this. No, we are not doing again. We're not doing this again. No sci-fi. No, I've never seen Star Wars. I've never seen Star Wars. What about I Star have Trek? seen a couple. Yes, right. I've seen a couple episodes. I'll give you, I'll give you some credit. Then. I'll give you. I'll give you some credit. I've seen Battlestar Galactica, but everybody doesn't like that. Well, cause, you know what? Okay, so Battlestar, I mean, I like Battlestar. Battlestar was fantastic. But it's the same right. reason why, like, I don't like fucking Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. So, like, er I get it. Like, everybody can't jump on everything. But, like, and that and that's a train. Like, if you like Battlestar, you're not watching Star Wars. And, like, for me, like, I don't watch Doctor Who at all. Like, I tried. And especially, I have to watch stuff in chronology order. And so uh, that means I have to start back in the 60s with Doctor Who. I just can't. Everybody should just jump to the 2000 ones. I'm like, I can't do that. I, I don't feel the truth to the game. It's like people that came in to watch Game of Thrones when they came on TV instead of reading the books. It's like, yo, shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. I just looked it up. The Sims 4 has, as of November 16th, 2020, The Sims 4 has nine expansion packs, eight game packs, 17 stuff packs. And it can cost you $700. For everything? Them. Yes. And yeah, $700 per person. Yeah, they're winning. They're winning. And if people are not They're thinking, winning. Yeah. Not to mention the amount of sales they have. And so many people buy their expansions on sale. More people buy their. I will, let me, I'm going to tell you a little secret, Tim. Go for it. I'm going to tell you a little secret, okay. everybody. Everybody. Nobody. Especially me. Almost nobody ever buys all their expansions at full price for The Sims 4. A majority of people will wait for a sale. Yeah, that makes sense. Because expansions are what, 20 bucks, 30 bucks? Correct. So half uh, off 15, but, yeah. Yeah, so the kits are like four ninety nine. Your stuff packs are nine ninety nine. Your game packs are nineteen ninety nine. And then your expansions, which I consider like whole, full DLC, because they expand your game. Yeah. 40 bucks. Damn. $40 DLC, though, is not terrible. Yes, it is. I, That's no. horrible. That's a whole new game. Well, no, because people pay significantly more for DLC sometimes, like Most, exclusive skins. Like outside tech in some games, they like, well, except for Fortnite, which you pay per skin. But like yeah, like mm -hmm. the, they'll do the season passes for like twenty five bucks, twenty bucks. Like and that's what and that's what Capcom's been doing with Street Fighter Five. They've been milking it since it dropped in twenty fifteen. I mean, like up oh, twenty bucks, twenty bucks, twenty bucks, twenty bucks. And now this time they didn't even do a season pass. It was like, yeah, you're paying for the fuck character. Where Tekken has been like, which I like Tekken because Napoli's been real good about just dropping the season pass and let people run with it. But damn, it's fucking. That's a lot of free. Jesus, they is EA is winning. EA is milking the teat on the, the teat of fucking. I, Sims is huge. 
the yeah sims is a the thing is is that sims and well um if we go back to our first podcast this is what i was talking about yep. with paralyzed is that sims is huge because it has no competition like there is no game but out there who there wants is to no compete? simulation who would want to compete with that though that's a monster that's like somebody remember like back when grand theft auto first came out everybody's like oh this is a grand theft auto killer killer has it been a Grand Theft Auto killer yet? Absolutely fucking not. Like, going up against the Sims like, is like going up against a dragon. Like, and that's... But Paralives is trying to do that. Paralives really is trying to go up against Sims by giving Simmers what the Sims is not giving them right now. Which and is what? Which is what? Wheel, what's, what's the list? What's the list? A, a color wheel, curved walls, mismatched socks. Yes, mismatched socks. I want to wear different socks! <laughs> Better skin tones. But there's no black people in Sims? Or there's black and then white? Um, it's, I mean, the skin tones have improved, like, within the last four years of Sims, like, existing. Mm-hmm. Like, we only had maybe, like, 20 skin tones at the beginning, and now we have over 100 skin tones, along with sliders for them. But, like, apparently Paralives can go more in-depth than that, mm-hmm. especially with skin details. Like freckles, like you have more freckle options, which I like because I have freckles. <laughs> Believe it or not, people, I have freckles. Um, she, does. <laughs> Tim, <laughs> she does. I got freckles too. I've seen them. I got freckles too. <laughs> yes, I. They're small though. They're not. You can't really. Uh, yeah, you can't. Dude, I feel like sometimes if you take off my glasses, I feel like it's the most notable thing about my face. I feel like people don't really notice I have freckles until I take my glasses off. Because mm. a lot, because you know, because my frames are always so big. You know, I'm a big frame person. I always have been. <laughs> so and I'm the exact um, opposite. I got a big ass head. And I got the sm- I like the smaller frames. It accentuates the forehead. <laughs> it's, it's so it's so weird. Why is that? You ever notice that? Like like smaller. I'm, I won't say smaller people. Is that a bad term? But anyway, like, smaller people, you have big shit, and then big people have smaller shit. <laughs> like, 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 short people having really big dogs. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you riding your dog? Is that is that a fucking dire wolf? What the hell's going on here? <laughs> Onward, Cisco. Let's go. I have been more inclined to want to own big dogs than little dogs. Yeah. I think the biggest small dog I want to own is an Airedale Terrier, and Airedale Terriers are the biggest of the Terriers. Um, as far as you're like, you're like will... a husky, like it's a big dog. Yes. But you're, I mean, but you're you're the, you're the cat. You're the, the sire of sea snake. See, the witch, he's not with you right now, though, right? He's at the crib still? No, sea smoke, my cat, is not. He is still at the crib. My sister is taking care of him, though. So. You probably text her after when she's coming home. <laughs> Basically. He just started coming out of, from underneath of the bed to her, though. Because we all know Sea Smoke is a shy guy and only likes to be around the webcam when it's on. <laughs> He's like, um, is that thing on? Hello, everybody. I'm Sea Smoke. <laughs> Welcome to my we should, podcast. <laughs> we should give him his... We should We should have just called this Sea Smoke Soup <laughs> instead right. of Blurred Soup. Right. A s- sessions with Sea Smoke. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, one thing I will say... Um, all uh, Sims games, when DLC comes out, they do come with patch updates, and we are getting um, we are getting a few like base game updates. So okay, Tia, please, them- please. I mean, I mean, everybody know they're probably oh, this is a Sim episode, but yo, Sims is fucking huge. I mean, I don't play it, but Sims like, is huge. But, it, I think but, it's, but have- I'm actually I'm still blown by it because I'm like yo, they, they're doing all this shit. Like that's that's fantastic, and the fact like it's like dude, I did not know all this shit was going on with the Sims. I thought Sims was still in Sim Four. People's got the little freaking green thing above their head, and that's it. I mean, because think about it. How often do you see a Sims commercial anymore? You don't. It's like it's so big, no. you don't have to advertise it. Well, the funny thing is, is that there's actually, like, quite a few. There's actually, like, a handful of, like, Sims 4 commercials that recently came out within the last year. They put them out in, like, 2020. And um, I'll have to I'll have to post a link on, on, uh, on the pages of them. But they are... But they got a lot of flack because they didn't properly represent the way the Sims game is. Is it, like, is it racism in the Sims? Is it racism? Is it that, is that diversity inclusion done in the Sims? 
diversity and inclusion has been really big and um a lot of black simmers have been um have been the head of have been at the home of that mm. um specifically x mira mira ebonic sims and d sims mm. um they're kind of like the big three poc um simmers right now or i should say black and how's the simmers. community management done for that too is it done pretty well for making sure people aren't being racist as shit like, there's not no ku klux klan group in the sims is it I'm sure there is. This is a um, private party, people. We've really just... It's really hard to tackle and combat racism in the Sims community because it's... Because right, it's just it's an so, avatar. Like, everybody's playing somebody that they're not. Like, it's an avatar. Thing. It's it's sporadic. Like, yeah. um, a lot of times you can kind of pinpoint them in Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. You can kind of like see like who the racists are. And there are groups that black simmers recommend other black simmers stay away from or leave or like don't be a part of um, just because the way they treat uh, black simmers in the group is mm -hmm. way different than the way they treat white simmers. Um, there's... <laughs> <laughs> I like There's, how it sounds like sinners. I, like, hello, black yeah. sinners. <laughs> yeah. You simmers. sinners of. Simmer. Simmer down, simmers. <laughs> and then the 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 verb of simming is always is always quite hilarious too. The the phrase of simming, because it always sounds like sinning. Right. <laughs> um. I mean, there's no okay. There's like no racism DLC in The Sims, right? Like, there's no off the wall. No. Shit. Okay. No, but it you doesn't know people, stop people. Like, remember, in, if you played World of Warcraft, like people had mods that can do some fucked up shit. So are there mods that people can thing. do fucked up shit in Sims? Yes, and people have, and people, people, people will, people have, and people will. Like, and that's just the nitty gritty of like mod making is that people have made very crappy things, and people. So will okay, so give me a list. What, what are some fucked up shit that we've seen that you've seen in the Sims? You're just like, oh, that's that's not for kids. I've seen, well, myself personally, um, I have, uh, I've had the base mental mod, so I've grown weed in The Sims before. Can you um, sell it? <laughs> yes, you can. Does he, do they smoke it? Yes, you can. And how, so how, so does the gameplay change when you get high? The gameplay changes. So it's um, like all there's animations mode. done. Yes. Um, you get like a playful mood lit when you're smoking. Um, sometimes you have to be really careful though, because if your sim becomes hysterical, they can die of laughter. And I didn't know this, and my sim was becoming hysterical a lot because I was having her smoke a lot. Mm -hmm. um, she never died though, which was like the great part. Um, but they can die of laughter. So what um, happens when they die? What happens when they? Um, well, it depends. Uh, if you have other adult sims in your household that you can play, mm -hmm. um, that sim just kind of passes passes on. You get in like a little like tombstone or like an urn in your house mm -hmm. and you can put it somewhere and then you can interact with the urn and sometimes you can see that sim's ghost around, but it's not a part of your household unless you make it so. Um if your sim dies, you can always add it to the household and just become and just use it as a ghost and just have like a playable ghost. Um, ghost DLC. <laughs> uh, your sims can die of laughter, embarrassment, and anger, emotion wise. How does anger cause um, them to die? That's interesting. They can have car they can have a cardiac explosion, which is the sim equivalent to a heart attack. So the next explode on screen, how's that work? Or they just um, drop. They just, they get like really angry and they start waving their arms and like stomping their feet and then like it goes, oh no, and then your sim's name is dying of a cardiac explosion. And then they go, huh! <sighs> and they just like, there's just like a way they so just you, like so fall you, on the ground. So do you continue or you just move on to the next sim in the house? Um, if you're, if you're, if your sim is by itself, it's basically game over mm -hmm. and you have to start like basically like a new save. But if you have another sim in the house, you can just, you know, play that sim and just have them cry at the tombstone. <laughs> so does the sims auto save then? So if your person dies, you just go back to your, load the last save you had and you should be good, right? Unless it's auto save. Um, 
you there is no auto save okay. so that is possible and people do that and people and people close out and reload their game just and not save all the time mm-hmm. like an auto save feature would be detrimental to the sims to the sims franchise really yeah i an auto save feature would not be helpful to the sims franchise because so many people harp on that like because like so many mistakes and accidents can happen especially if you're doing like a let's play mm-hmm. or like a challenge and it's something that you want to like prolong like your and your sim dying is like not the move a lot of people will turn off aging you know your sim doesn't get any older but that doesn't stop them from drowning true what is the, what is the age like how does the age how was the day in the sims um so your so your um your lifespans i think are about 90 days like all together so you've got like three days as a baby like 14 days as a toddler 45 days like collect like collectively as an adult and a young adult and then like a couple weeks and then like a couple like days um as an elder i'm the well, elder sims hello there yes so the elder sims the elder sims are always funny because like no matter like how like no matter what their body type is like like they're always end up being like the same body type and no matter how fit they are they always go (laughs) like they have like like they have like a crick in their back (laughs) um back in my day (laughs) when (laughs) exactly when your sims die of old age Mm -hmm. which is they basically like they never have anything bad happen to them like they basically like wave and just like throw like a little peace out sign before they just like lay down and expire. And so do you buy like a casket and shit too? Like how real is that? Like you buy a casket, set the funeral it's dates, not really, invites. It's not too it's not too realistic in that sense. Okay. A lot of people a lot of people will throw like they'll like throw like a social event and like just deem it like a funeral. Mm. Like they'll have like a black and white dinner party to ensure that everyone's wearing black or white and then have like a funeral and like people like approach like the tombstone or the urn and they cry at it and they talk and they're sad and so but as far as like when your sim dies like the grim reaper shows up he just swings his little scythe to like reap your soul Mm -hmm. and then and when he grabs the soul like the urn appears And he'll hang out for a little bit. You can chat with him. You, you can chat maybe with Death. You can sh- He's like, hey, how you guys doing? You guys yeah. want a beer, Death? Yeah, man, I'll take a beer. <laughs> well, you can sometimes plead for a Sim's life. Oh, really? And then Death is like, all right, I'll be back next Tuesday. It depends. Like, um, if they're confident, you'll be able to, like, demand that they bring the Sim back. Mm. Um, I think your charisma skill has to be a certain level in order for it to work. Because if your charisma skill is low... When you go to plead for someone's life, it'll go, don't plead for death, lest ye be reaped. Mm. So it kind of just, like, is, like, don't beg death to bring back that person unless you want to be the replacement. Right. Is how I've always interpreted it. Or but what? I don't know if any new deaths will come with this expansion. I kind of hope not. I mean, how long has it been since the death upgrade? Um... Death hasn't really ever needed an upgrade, but the last time we got some upgraded deaths, um, you can fall to your death thanks to uh, The Sims 4 Snowy Escape. If you're rock climbing and your rock climbing skill's not good enough and your weather conditions climbing Mount Komorebi are disgusting, you can definitely fall to your death. Mm. I haven't had that happen to me, but I've seen it happen to other people. (laughs) It's It's happened to other Sims. I know a guy happened to before. Yeah, it's happened to other Sims while my Sim was trying. <laughs> it was not good. It's like, no, we can't um, another, the Another base game update that we're actually going to get um, with the patch is going to be the Pond tool, which a lot of people were missing from The Sims 4, but basically it's a terrain tool that allows you to make ponds. Like koi ponds and stuff? Like... like- you can you could make a koi pond. Um, you can you can you can stuff you can like um, take like little like tiles and like put them like in your pond. And when you're in build mode, it'll spawn that animal. So you mm-hmm. could put an alligator in there. 
You can put ducks or swans in there, um, lily pads, uh, logs that turtles will like walk up on and just kind of hang out on. Um, you can put fishing posts in there and then you can stock your pond with like fishable fish. So it's a tool that a lot of people have been asking for um, from The Sims 3, and we haven't had just like point blank. And I think a lot of people's problem with The Sims 4 was that when it first came out in 2017, it was missing a lot of tools and a lot of features mm-hmm. that were automatically given to us in the first three, like toddlers. Like for some reason, when The Sims 4 came out in 2017, your babies automatically were children instead of going right to being toddlers. <laughs> I'm a grown man now, mom. <laughs> right. You just missed that. You just missed like that whole like life stage. And but they came but toddlers came out later in a different update. I didn't buy The Sims until I want to say 2018, 2019. Nope. I think it had to have been, I bought it for like, I don't know if it was free or if I got it for the $5 Mm because usually those, usually when they have, when they sell the Sims, like on sale, they end up doing the base game for like $5 right? because there are so many expansions. Like there's no point in making the $40 base game, $20, like all the other expansions when you can just make the base game $5 and have everybody spend more on the expansions, Mm -hmm. even though they're half off. So but there's a lot coming to The Sims this month, and I'm really excited for the next 12 hours. Well, yeah, because at the time we're recording this. Yeah, for the next 12 hours at the time of this recording, there is a music festival going on in The Sims called Summer, so called Sims of Summer Sessions. Mm-hmm. BB Rexa, Glass Animals, and one other artist I cannot remember right now is um, part of the music lineup. So... Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't had any Sims participate in that just yet, so that's what I am hoping to do probably in the next day. Right, so almost... I haven't played I haven't played any video games really like the whole time I've been on vacation in Texas, so. mm. <laughs> with good reason. Right. So, but to say, because I feel like the Sims should have been the one that was doing the concert shit before Fortnite started doing it. That's just how I feel about it. Yeah, but then again, but Fortnite players like... and Sim players are two apples and oranges. Yeah, but at the same time, like, the thing about Fortnite is that it's a live, is that it was live. Yeah. You know, basically. Like, you had to be in the game online, yeah, at a certain time. Uh, Whereas in The Sims, it's like an event that your Sims can attend once a week, every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So there's no there's no online play aspect with The Sims. There's no multiplayer aspect, really. There's a multiplayer mod, but it's very complicated, and I don't. And I mean, I'm not a fan of the idea of The Sims becoming multiplayer anyways. The whole point of Sims is to be simulated, like, on your own. Right. Um, so, but a lot of people want that multiplayer aspect where, like, there's one house, but two people are playing in it, and two people are playing, like, their, their um, designated separate Sims. Like, maybe it's, like, a husband and wife couple and the wife wants to play her sim and the husband wants to play his sim. Right. That's the only way I can really see, like, multiplayer being helpful in The Sims. But, like, this multiplayer, cross-platform, PvP, like, kind of, like, scenario, I don't really like that very much for The Sims. And I don't really think they should go in that direction either. So, yeah. I, um, I just really feel that, um, I just really feel like The Sims is... I just feel like that The Sims is going in a specific direction and always has been. And I feel like a lot of people want too much for it to be just like every other game. True. I mean, I just, yeah. So this is the thing real quick. So why is there a Sims MMO? Why is there or isn't there? Isn't there? I don't know. Remember Pokey MMO? Yep. I miss that. Is it still a thing? That is a good question. Oh, oh, what was the other game too? Was it not? It was Maple Story. Maple Story. Yes, I used to play a shit ton of Maple Story. A shit ton of Maple Story. I don't know why there's not a Sims MMO. Yeah. I don't even know Does if that how, make more how sense the Sims now? like the Sims should be an MMO where it's like, guess what? I just got off work now. I'm logging the Sims for my regular life. Like I feel like it's at that point now. 
Um, there is kind of like a like a going to work um, with your sim yeah. aspect to some of the expansions, but like in MMO, where like you can actively like go to work with like other sims, and like have like I don't know. I think there's going to be like an MMO RPG element in this mm. uh, cottage living expansion pack because you can do something with the villagers in the hob called um, run like running errands. Yeah. Like it's like little side quests for your sim to do, and they're not like odd jobs where they get to walk. Time <laughs> stamped. Yeah, it's like you're you late. can do them at any. Yeah, you can do them at any point. Like, I don't know. I haven't. I just. I can't believe this pack only comes out in two weeks because I'm already excited for it and talking like I've been playing it. It's a damn, damn shame. So, what else is on the agenda? Have you got anything else that we're covering today? Um, the my Netflix sent me a notification telling me that the Resident Evil Infinite Darkness show came out today. Yes, it did. Okay. I have not watched it yet. I have. Um, because have you? <laughs> yes. And I'm not gonna get into detail because I don't want to spoil it for the funds. But I was me personally, I was not impressed at all. At all. Well, well, my secret weapon is is that I've never seen any of the Resident Evil TV shows or films. So that definitely is a secret weapon. <laughs> yes. That is, that's usually my secret weapon for most things that mm. have come out lately is that I have so little to no knowledge about them that like I just, I, I, it's easy for me to like go into them blindly and just kind of see yeah. them for what they are. What? Oh, are you up to date on Loki? No. See, my apologies. Y'all. I know. I'm, I'm up to date. This is the second. This is the second. This is the second week you've asked me about it, and I'm like, no, yeah. I'll have to ask. I'll have to ask my pirate if he's got. Because by the time next week, it'll be the the finale will be out. I know. I really got to catch up because that way we can actually yeah. talk about these like two, the second these last half. Two episodes miss has been fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I hear episode four is really good, and I hear episode five is much better. Five was this nuts. <laughs> five was like, oh my god. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, other than that though, anything else that you watch right now before we kick it off and move forward? I'm still, I uh, am watching season two of Motherland of Fort Salem. That's on Freeform. If you like witches and you like military propaganda, you should watch it. Yep. Um, what else am I watching? House Broken. The, an- the adult animation on Fox has five episodes up. And they are really funny. If you're looking for an adult animated show about animals, it is for you. And if you're in therapy, especially group therapy, you should definitely give it a watch because it is super relatable in that aspect. Mm. And there you have it, folks. I mean, I'm watching, like I said, I watch Resident Evil. Um, I also watch it. Um, God, what was the name of the show when I was on Netflix? Something, something. It was the... It was a new anime series they dropped. They only dropped the first twelve episodes. Ragnarok, so, uh, yeah, something Ragnarok. <gasps> yeah. Yes, Ra- race, uh, Rage of Ragnarok. Mm, I, I don't know. It's like I don't know. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. I don't know what it's called, but like I just saw like a cosplay of like somebody pretending to be like the lady with the big titties who has yes. like the Yes, she, she literally has up. two slaves that hold her breast up and then that, that's her seat. Is it, yeah, that's or that's Aphrodite. She's Aphrodite too. That's the character. Aphrodite. Yeah. I'll really have to watch this because Aphrodite it's good. is not normal. And, it's, and it makes sense too. Like a lot of it's because it's literally like gods versus humans, and it's a tournament yeah. about it. But like, it's good. I like it. Like I was like, okay, like this is where is that? This is where we're going, and we're there. Mm-hmm. What the fuck is name? It's just like something. Did you watch Yusuke yet though? I know you said you gonna watch Yusuke last time we talked too. I have not. I am focused, my anime attention has been focused on season two of Beastars, which is coming out next Thursday. Yep, July yes, it 15th. is. So. That little rabbit hoe. That little rabbit was I out know. there. She was getting I open. I rabbit hoe. <laughs> I'm really excited. Uh, the stag, the red deer, like, really, like, surprised me for a season. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see where Right, he, he was like, the, he was basically almost like a villain almost. He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. get all this shit. I think he's gonna he's gonna end up being some sort of rogue anti hero, I think. Right. Yeah, Record of Ragnarok, that's the name of it. Record of Ragnarok. 
Fantastic. Great. Okay. And wait for the yes. season two to drop. And it looks like all the Underworld drop. I'm just going for Netflix. Oh, you finally finished Castlevania too. I did. And Fantastic. it was heartbreaking. It was heartbreakingly good. Well, well, they already announced with the second the new the spinoff is gonna be fantastic. It's gonna be even good, even better. I, I'm so excited. So for excited. I'm excited too. Does I it, love that. No matter what, Alucard's still gonna be there because Alucard doesn't die. Yeah. He's <laughs> like very unfortunately, important. you know, they died. Other people will die, but not at the. But I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. Season four was literally Symphony of Night. Nobody called it, but I called it. I'm like, this is fantastic. The way it ended was great. And it was just like, yo, this is what it's all about. Like, you gotta, you gotta give Netflix his respect for the way they handled such a great series. And also, I mean, yeah. it, it, I mean, it was it was sad. It was super sad. You like, you actually felt for the characters like, yo. Like, since I love when, like, the Carmella episode was fantastic. Like, she, she, woo. She went out the way she I needed think... to go out. No, so, I mean, I'm yeah. not gonna spoil it, but. I mean, no, I can't spoil but... it. This is the podcast. You better you better stay up to date on shit. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't my fault. I just I I find that the ending the ending really was heartbreaking, but I think the very very end where um, Lisa and Dracula are spoilers are literally like back to life. Yep. I I find that to be so like I find that to be nice. But I also find it to be like it felt a little bit too cliche. Yes, no, I get that, but at the same time, it's like, yo, Dracula literally stopped doing everything that he did because of her. Yeah. Like literally, he went from a stone cold not giving a fuck to like and he even told him, like, yo, man, y'all murdered my wife? The one motherfucker I cared about, the one yeah. person I love, you murderer? Guess what? Even though I can kill you all right now, I'm gonna give y'all one year to get y'all shit together. Oh, and y'all, y'all really? Y'all thought I was bullshitting? That was fantastic. He's like, oh, y'all, 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 y'all. Oh, you thought this was a game? <laughs> right. Like, like, no, no, I know. I'm Dracula, bro. Like, I'm, 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 I smoke smoke. <laughs> I smoke smoke. But yeah, it was great. And then, like, and then to see him come back, and then like Dracula's was like, yo, we back. And I'm with my wife. I'm good. Let's go see a little Alucard now. <laughs> I want my castle back, Alucard. Give my shit back. If you, if you have any questions about any of the shows that we talked about, they are Castlevania is available on Netflix, as is B Stars, as is Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, Motherland, Fort Salem, House Broken are available on Hulu. McMillions, which we talked about earlier, is available on HBO. And a Loki, just in case you're not watching it yet, is available on Disney Plus. Disney Plus. And speaking of Disney Plus, I'm about to go check out Black Widow. For, dude, my first time returning back to the theater tonight. Go see Black oh Widow. My gosh. Black Widow comes out, and this is my first time in two years. The last movie I saw in theaters was the last. Oh my God! Was it Rise of Skywalker? Yep, 2019 was the last time I was in a theater. That's sad. I think the last movie I saw in theaters was Birds of Prey, and the Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. You know what? You're right. Actually, that's remind me. Bad Boys Three because that came out last year. That was the last movie I saw. Yep. Bad Boys Three. That was like right before like COVID. Fucking COVID. Now everybody's back doing their thing, doing a little diddle diddle diddle. So. Yes, but we are still back to work at home, and we are dedicated all the time even when our mental health is crappy and even when we are quiet online we are every single day dedicated to bringing you black content in gaming literature technology uh sports sports ball do thing when points but we are dedicated to bringing it all to you once a week on this podcast of blurred soup that is put on to you every day by Black Esports Network, your B-E-S-N dot TV. And we are really happy that you podcasted with us and were listening to us today. He is T Fields, our thug geek, and I am your Fonz, Ari Fonzarelli, your one and only content creator at Black Esports Network that you can only see at B-E-S-N dot TV. And we are so glad that you guys all listened to episode three of Blurred Soup, and we will see you all next week. Later, taters.